All right, I now call to order the new Carlisle City Council meeting, regular uh, meeting Monday, April 16th, 2018 at 7 p.m. Mrs. Berner. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lighty. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. All right, uh, we're, we're gonna do our invocation. If you don't mind silencing your cell phones, I'm gonna do it tonight. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for the ability to gather here in this public place uh, to decide how our city is to be ran. Lord, let us have the freedoms that we have in this country. Bless the meeting uh, as we continue forward to grow our city. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 So we're gonna do our pledge here in the back. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. all right. Actions on the minutes. So moved. Second. Yes. Mr. Shannon. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Light. Yes. And it's seven. All right. So six is uh, communications. We have a proclamation for ABIT for Motorcycle Safety Awareness Month. They have reached out to me. We have Scott representing them tonight. If you don't mind coming up here. Mr. Cook. Last name is P L A. I would like to make a motion for a suspension of the rules and move item 11 up to this point in the agenda. Second. I'm going to hand it over to our service director, Mr. Howard Kitko, to give a better explanation without confusing people than I could. Mr. Kitko. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council. Um, basically, this is a repair to a rotating biological contactor. This is just the bearing repair and uh, not having the media or anything like that replaced. This is almost kind of proprietary to have this type of work done. We've done, this will be our third one, and just because uh, 
the way the new rules are for the city manager, we had to bring it in front of council uh, for the repair. But they will come on site. Uh, this is a time and material job. And so far, the other two we have done have not had any issues with. Uh, it is an expensive repair. The bearings alone are $10,000 that you'll see on your estimate. So the rest is labor. But um, it's just an explanation of what they're going to be doing with just the bearing portion. All right. Council, any questions, comments? Nope. Nope. All right. Mrs. Ferner. All right. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shady. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mayor Hill. Yes. Mr. Light. Yes. So moved. Second. Uh, in explanation to this ordinance 1806, I'm going to pass it to our assistant fire chief, Mr. Cooper. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bridge, mayor, members of council. Um, to explain this a little better, um, we currently are using a reporting software for um, ESO solutions. Does our fire and EMS reporting. Um, all the rest of our records management systems within the fire division are all done by hand um, the old-fashioned way. Um, this reporting software will not only um, continue to allow us to do quality fire and EMS reporting, um, quality reporting to the state and the things that we are already allowed able to do, um, but it's going to fully computerize the rest of our records management systems. Um, we're going to be able to fully computerize our maintenance, inspections, our hydrant records, um, equipment, uh, maintenance tickets, um, our annual inspections for uh, local businesses, um, as, all, as well as payroll um, and things like that. When, when this system is fully up and running and integrated, which should be pretty quickly once we get rolling, um, we'll be able to completely go away from a paper system, be a lot more efficient, a lot more cost effective um, for the city and the citizens. Um, as it states there in the ordinance as well, it's a significant cost savings for a much better reporting software. Um, it's mainly based on the fact that they've been around a long time and they've, their customer base is a lot larger than the other reporting software. Um, the integration as well, um, not only inside the fire division, but also in the city with possibly with um, the water department and the service director will have access to that. Um, if any access they want to have as far as hydrant records to help them um, do their job more efficiently, um, the finance uh, department will also be able to have access to the payroll portion of that on their end so that we can get away from hand delivering documents down to them. Everything will be electronic and much more efficient um, within the city. Um, and like it says there, we're saving, uh, you know, we're looking at a $2,700 savings just in the first year and a 3,000 plus savings year two and three after that. So we're trying to be as fiscally responsible as we can with the money that, that we have as well. So. Thank you. Council? Nothing? I couldn't hear everybody say it. So moved. All right. Council, nothing else? All right. Mrs. Berner. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Hall. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mayor Mills. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're moving back to the city manager's report. Mr. Bridge. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. I'd like to share through the city manager's report, and we'll start with our finance discussion with our finance director, Ms. Colleen Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, Council, and the members of the public tonight. This is our finance report for the month of March. The total revenue we took in is $1,105,210.05. Total expenditures for the month of March is $625,156.91. And brings a year-to-date total of revenue collected of $1,000,000. $774,175.69. And our year to date total expenditures is $1,308,766.83. I do have a 
general fund broken down, I wanted to go over that. For the month of March, the general fund alone brought in $165,139.11. And the expenditures for the general fund for the month of March is $355,174.83. With a brief explanation of those expenditures being so high for the month of March, they include the transfers that are in our budget the amounts that we moved over for the bond payment, the Twin Creeks, and the transfer loan to the Water Department. So those are actually considered expenditures because they come out of the general fund, and then they move into revenue in the appropriate funds to pay those amounts. Also, I put a couple of notes. Uh, today was our busiest day of the year with the uh, income taxes due, the water payments due, and us working on payroll. I wanted to thank my team in the office. They, my staff just wonderful. We, we kept pretty busy. But there are still some city um, income tax forms in the office. If anybody is a late filer and needs that information, stop by the office tomorrow. Again, the Water Department, you can get on our website, www.newcarlisle.net. Click on the pay water and sewer bills if you'd like to pay your water bill. With your credit card, there is a convenience fee. Or for a free service, you can stop by the office and sign up for auto pay. And uh, we can do that at no cost for that service. Pool, swimming pool season passes are available also in the office. The opening tenant of the day is May 26. So if uh, anybody wants to get their pool passes, you can come up in the office and take care of that. The rest of the report is submitted. If there's any questions I can entertain, I'd be glad to. Council? Any questions, Mrs. Harris? I had one, just real quick. Uh, it's in our check register here. Uh, it says replace the stoplight was that was damaged and was reimbursed. So we paid it out, and then the company which knocked the light reimbursed us. Yes. Correct. Awesome. So no insurance was needed on our part. That's always good. So, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Birch. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. And moving on with our city manager. Thank you, Ms. Harris. Moving on with the city manager for our services director. With our service director, Mr. Howard Kitko. Thank you again, Mr. Bridge. Uh, Mayor, council members of the public, uh, tonight's service department notes, we are estimating for some in-house uh, asphalt repairs. I do have another update on top of that, uh, our dura patching pothole um, schedule is going to be a little behind our truck has been in for four weeks. Well, the truck hasn't, it's waiting on a dump body to come in for four weeks, and I've just been told it got delayed three more for it to get delivered, so that's gonna hold up dura patching. However, we will be doing uh, the estimate where we need to cut out asphalt spots and actually do more than a pothole repair. Uh, we currently have removed 12 trees during this winter um, within the last couple months, six in the old section, three in our parks, and three in our cemetery, and we have more tree work to do, and we will get those scheduled as time permits um, which will probably be a little less when we start doing asphalt work. Uh, we repaired or straightened the 48 street signs and we got many more to do. I think that's just a huge aesthetic uh, to the city as people are driving around. We still got to work on the town clock and get the one side uh, time adjusted. Uh, we will get onto that soon. 2018 various road projects do have an update. Uh, we are currently seeking estimates to overlay White Pine, Greenheart, and Langdale at this time. There may be slight changes pending estimated cost when um, the county does their, um, gets their estimations to me. And we also, I ha we have submitted uh, last Friday this uh, community block, community development block grant fund application uh, to reconstruct the 300 block of Galewood in 2019. And I am out currently doing uh, income surveys for that uh, 300 block of Galewood. So if you know anybody out there, um, let them know that I'll be door knocking. Um, I've had plenty of people tell me they don't want what I'm selling, so I'm trying to get them to come to the door for a good reason. <laughs> um, and moving on, uh, wastewater plant influent building upgrade. We are still working on uh, gathering some technical information for that bar screen project. Scarf Road water tower that is still scheduled for the middle of May. We're going to start that once we fill up the municipal swimming pool and uh, traffic signal upgrade project. There is no update from the last report, but we are currently working on acquiring our right-of-way to where the new poles will sit and or temporary right-of-way where the contractor needs some uh, legal area to be able to perform this uh, job. And that is all I have. I can entertain anything on the report or anything <clears throat> outside of that. Council? Mr. Kirk, uh, 
there at Scott and Linden, we've got an issue where people are running that curve going up into the neighbor's yard. They happened into one individual's yard there and went through his fence. Uh, when I was out campaigning, I was sitting there and had there been the one gentleman in his yard or his grandkids, a car would have struck him. He went straight through. Is there any way of putting a stop sign there at Scott and Linden? Um, I could take a look at it. Um, I know we had discussed this uh, before, and I'm wondering, I haven't heard of any more issues other than that one. Uh, I haven't been down there for a while. Uh, and, I, and I hit that area every once in a while, but I have not heard of any other issues outside of that. And outside of over signing for a um, human error will be, will be tough, because I'm guessing regardless of the stop sign, it's very possible they could have run it, but I will check into that. All I'm looking at, if we put one there on Scott Street, That'll stop them from making a quick, I don't want to say it, Left. quick turn or fail to negotiate. They're up in the neighbor's yard or up his driveway. And if one of his grandkids are there, they can't get out of the way. Yeah, I'll definitely check in until I get with Mr. Bridge and we'll. If a stop sign's not warranted, how would, how would the council feel about possibly limiting the speed bumps? So I know that we went down the stop sign route before, and you you have to you have to qualify it as being a stop sign. You can be legally held if, if you do put a stop sign there, and it's not warranted, quote unquote. Um, and how, no, how long ago did we look at this? It was like a year ago. Yeah, and we installed those yellow three. signs that are, I think yeah. are four foot. I mean, they're they glow. I mean, they're the new high vis. So someone just wasn't. It sounds like we just need some sort of slowing down the box, whether it be a stop. Sign I mean, as far as speed bumps. As far as you know, under the state, London does not connect into a state route. Scott Street does not connect into a state route. Therefore, you can put a stop sign there. But if you want to go to speed bumps, I'm fine with that too. Okay. Yeah, we'll look into it. Like I said, we did like a year and a half ago when it was brought to our attention. And even though it does not connect to a state route, you still have to have qualifiers to put it there. And, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but that's just what I recall from when we looked at it last year. Um, but like I said, it just sounds like we need some device to slow the vehicle down, whether it be a stop sign, or a speed bump, or whatever other kind of uh, device we could use to alleviate, help see if it helps alleviate problems. But yeah, that's been a, that's been an issue for for some time. Oh yeah, and I've and added to that, the street is not in the best shape, so they're speeding down a pretty rough road at that too. Yeah. Council, any other questions? Thank you. Mr. Mr. Lowry. Thank you. Mr. Kick, I just had a couple of quick questions. But first, I just wanted to thank you for all the hard work you've done. I mean, I know we're rolling into the busy season as far as you and your crew, the pool, the trees, the streets, pot filling. You guys have done an amazing job with getting uh, a large chunk of our streets repaired over the past couple of years. So I just wanted to thank you on that. Um, I just had a quick question on, on some of the repairs you do have down here. And I know they're, they're not set in stone yet, but White Pine. Um, White Pine, uh, what's like it goes up to when it's it's going north and it, it bends to the left? Uh, chestnut. Chestnut. So you, you would... It, it's all one. It all, okay, so you're talking about doing the whole stretch White, At this point, yes. Okay, okay. That, that's what I was curious about because I knew that that was well, technically a different... Yeah, what may change that a little bit is that has been overlaid already once, which means there'll be an increased millage on Chestnut. Chestnut was overlaid before okay. where White Pine wasn't, so there's an extra inch inch and a half of asphalt there okay that there'll be an additional cost to get that portion off but uh hopefully it's not too much that we have to you know rework the numbers okay now will this also be like uh the repairs we did last year where there's going to be curb that needs repaired will be attended to yep the the mo the worst curb will get repaired okay uh and then one other question about i i had this one come to me uh the willowick park draining um should that be draining so you know since it has been redone down there at the bottom of the hill? Uh, we did clean it out. That is a dry well. That does not have a discharge to the creek or anything like that. So um, it's just like any other dry well. If the, the ground is saturated and we get all the rains like we did, right. yes, it will uh, back up and it will leach out. And usually it's gone within a day or so. Okay. I, I heard about the comment myself, okay. um, but yeah, that's natural for that. It used to be way worse before we cleaned it out a couple yeah. years ago. Yeah, I remember. But yeah. So cool. So, yeah, I, and I figured that that's what it was because I knew that it, it wasn't tapped in any of our other, like, live lines, I guess. is pretty Yeah, it's just got to perk into the ground. Right. So, all right. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Council, anything else? No. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Kutko. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And moving on with the city manager's report, our fire discussion with our assistant chief. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, members of council. Uh, first of all, uh, Chief Trusty wanted to pass along his apologies for not being able to make it tonight. He has an illness in the family uh, he's tending with. Um, he asked me to come in his place, so um, I'll try to mumble through this as best I can. Um, our, uh, for the month of March, um, the City of New Carl Fire Division responded to 70, 75 EMS calls um, in the city limits, um, eight in our contract of Elizabeth Township. Uh, the division responded to eight fire-related calls, uh, one of those being in Elizabeth Township. Um, we had four calls, EMS calls, answered by mutual aid, either by Pike or Bethel Township, uh, due to our primary medic, Medic 52, being on, an, on another, another run. Uh, we answered one mutual aid call for Pike Township in the month of March and three for Bethel Township. Uh, in the month of March, the division responded to a total of three overdose calls. Also, uh, here recently, the division purchased new duty jackets for all of our personnel. Um, these are high visibility jackets, which will improve our safety uh, personnel on scene. Um, they're also waterproof, windproof, and they have uh, zip out fleece liners. I actually have mine here because I saw it was on the agenda, so I figured I probably ought to bring it with me. <laughs> um, it's been uh, just a little background on that. It's uh, been quite a while since uh, we replaced our duty jackets for our personnel. Uh, the ones we're currently out in circulation are starting to show some wear. Um, so it had been a discussion of what we were going to go with, and we actually just happened to stumble across uh, Crouch down here um, in Huber that uh, had a bunch of these they were trying to uh, clearance out, and we were able to get a significant deal um, and paid quite a bit less per jacket than what we were already planning to pay. Um, and we were able to outfit any of our members that wanted a jacket um, with a nice quality jacket that keeps them safe on the scene, warm and, and obviously dry in the rain. So. Um, that's been a, a big morale boost down at the firehouse as well. Um, starting in May, um, as we uh, talked about in the ordinance earlier, the division switching to a new reporting system uh, where we'll be able to increase all the efficiencies of our um, internally at the division, increase grant funding um, possibilities as well as saving the money that we're currently already being entrusted with by the citizens. Um, Additional uh, information that Chief Trusty wanted me to pass on. Wanted to remind everybody that we have an open house this Saturday, um, the 21st, from 2 to 4 p.m. Um, at station at the station at, on North Church Street um, to answer any questions anybody has about the upcoming levy. Um, we'll also have some equipment out, some information, um, some handouts that will be available there, as, as well as our personnel. Um, and other than that, I have no further information. Is there any questions or comments I can answer? Council? No, thank you. Thanks. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you, uh, Assistant Chief Cooper. And moving on with the city management for a police discussion with our uh, police administrator, Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, sir, Mayor, Council, and citizens. Um, the police report for New Carlisle. Deputies were dispatched to 53 calls. Assaults, we had three. Domestic violence, we had five. Thefts, we had two. Non-injury crash, three. Injury crash, none. Citations, four. Drug complaint, one. Overdose, none. And suicide attempted, two. During the month of March, the New Corral deputies received, recovered a stolen car in the parking lot of the municipal pool. And it's not uncommon but this one especially was brought to my attention. And there was a B&E at the water treatment plant and a city employee, <clears throat> excuse me, witnessed a male subject leaving, but could not get a good physical description. Although the vehicle uh, was found abandoned in Troy and it did have a loaded handgun inside. Uh, so those situations can be bad. And I just want to let you know on Thursday, May 3rd, this year, uh, 6 p.m., there's going to be a self protection program sponsored by the Clark County Sheriff's Office at the New, at the New Corral Library. It's geared for older people who want to stay safe and protect themselves when necessary. And like always, please contact the Clark County Sheriff's Department at 937-328-2560 if you witness anything suspicious. Uh, this can be done, a simple phone call could solve the crime. So. That's my report. Um, thank you. Entertain any questions if you have any. Council? Sergeant Underwood, thanks for the report. Uh, you, uh, you guys have the um, bicycles ready to go? 
Yes, uh, it was just due to the weather and and the officer that was going to bring it down uh, has illness in the family tonight too. So they're ready to go. Okay. Thank you. That's not anything else. I had one quick question, Sergeant Underwood. Yes. I was asked this this weekend. Do our deputies, when they go on uh, the bike patrol, do they venture off into the city elsewhere, or do they just stay on the bike path? Oh, they're all over the city. The, the bike pack path has been a priority because of incidents that we have, but they're in the city. We have them there during uh, market days. Uh, and any special event, we try to get one of them on the bike here. All right. Thank you. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Sergeant Underwood. Moving on with the city management report under informational items. Again, I've had this on here for about three or four meetings now. We do have online utility payments that you can pay your water bill. Um, please be aware of third-party vendors. Uh, so basically, if you do not pay your water bill through www.newparlot.net, you are using a third-party vendor. The problem with that is it's going to take a lot of extra time for us to get your payment, and your service may be shut off if we don't have your payment. So again, please make sure you pay your water bill through our city website. And we have about 200 accounts today signed up. So we're, we're hoping to get a few more. Planning board meeting is scheduled for April 26th at 6.30 p.m. And that will be at the fire station. Um, it will be to discuss the following. That is the Twin Creeks Covenants and also potential, uh, I'm not, Twin Creeks Covenants and also um, for a new business that will be located along North Main Street. I do have some bad news about Madison Street School. The people who are interested in it have failed to get back with me, so unfortunately I did not put that into the planning board meeting on the 26th. Great American Cleanup is underway. That is going until May 31st of 2018. Um, please call Linda Mitchell at 937-521-2023, and there you can sign up to get your materials, to which you can simply pick up here at the city building. Bloomwoods. Some great news, the city has been awarded the grant that I had uh, a paid account on. Um, so we will get $250 for flowers that we will plant around the city to help beautify it. Sunshine Laws training, I will be attending on April 24th along with some other council members. Um, and Sunshine Law training is um, basically some training that government officials have to do that says these are, as a government agency, you have to be open and transparent. And this training teaches you how to be open and transparent. Rotary speaking event is actually May 15th. I had discussed at the last council meeting that was on the 24th, but that is not true. It is actually May 15th, and I will be discussing the city financials. That is all I have for the city manager's report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions or comments. Council? Yep. Thank you so much, Mr. Bridge. Thank you. All right, moving on to comments from members of the public. Does anyone have any comments? Yes, we got one. Mr. Kraybacher, you don't mind giving your name and address, even though we already know it. <laughs> My name is John Kraybacher. I'm at 307 North Henry. And since we got a lot of teenagers here today, uh, I just posted on the Community Garden uh, website. We received grant so we can hire some people. And we, we've already got you know, a potential garden coordinator. And we're looking for two teenage people to kind of be interns. You don't have to learn about, if you want to learn about gardening, you like the outdoors, it's going to be approximately 20 hours a week. And um, we, we have to negotiate, you know, whatever you get paid. So, you know, this summer, if you want some extra money before you go to college, before you come back to school, maybe pay your insurance for your car, you know, um, go, to the, go to New Carlisle, Community Garden Facebook page and give us a post. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Kraybacher. Any other comments from members of the public? Mrs. My name is Jenny Stump. I live at 524 North Church Street. Um, I understand we have a code enforcement officer mm -hmm. with the city. Okay. What are his duties, his or her duties? Drive around, make sure properties are in compliance. Okay. What if a resident has a complaint about a property 
what, how is that handled? I, are you, I, how does a customer, I mean, citizen call in a complaint or once the complaint is there, how do we administer that complaint? Well, all right, personal. I filed a complaint, I filled out a complaint okay. form, filed it, and nothing has happened. But I did this, I, I don't know the exact date that I turned it into the city, okay. but it was, I didn't do this until today with other information I found out. Sure. It was last fall okay. that I filed this complaint. I found out today that it wasn't until March 29th that the code enforcement officer actually came to the location and took photographs of the subject of my complaint. His comment to the individual he spoke to was that nothing had been done and nothing would be done, even though there was obviously a problem at this residence. I'm wondering why he I made. Know. I don't know much about the situation. I'll have to look into it. Okay. To be honest. Because, I mean, to me, it was like, you know, I filed because I had filed another complaint last spring when there was not the same code enforcement officer. Within three weeks, the issue was taken care of. What was the nature of the complaint? The first one or the second one? The one that you're. The one that I'm referring yeah. to with no action? Yes. Um, my neighbor decided to take a tree down, did not know how to take a tree down, ended up hiring someone else to do it, but the ensuing brush pile is still laying in their backyard. It has torn up some fencing, some chain link fencing back there. Uh, it's attracting, for lack of a better word, varmints. Sure. And I have an issue with it. And as of this point, there has been a car sitting in the backyard for four months now, mm -hmm. almost five months. You know, the brush pile is probably about eight feet tall and takes up a good third of the back corner of the yard. And that's, I'm sorry, but that's ridiculous. I mean, I waited for at least probably a month and a half to two months after they took the tree down and made this big brush pile before I finally took some action. I was like, give them plenty of time to, mm -hmm. you know, trailer it, you know, to dispose of it on their own, and they never did, and it doesn't appear that they have any plans to do it in the foreseeable future. Okay. And so I was just wondering how, what, what else do I need to do to, because apparently the code enforcement officer said that he doesn't have the authority to do anything. I think the confusion in, in I think this is where the confusion comes in. I do recall having a conversation with, with him regarding a tree. When you have, it, it's what we call civil dispute. If you have a tree in your yard and a neighbor has a tree in their yard, we do not enforce that. That is between you and your neighbor. Right. right? Even if that tree falls and damages the fence, we do not get involved. That is between you and your neighbor. So I think what happened is Jim told them that there's nothing you can do about the tree being there. However, what I'm thinking is that nothing was done after the fact to address the brush pile the car. I don't know the whole situation. I right. So I'm going to have to speak with the individual. Right. I, I know that. I'm, I'll gladly. I'm throwing it. This this sure. is this is out of left field yeah. for you, and I, I understand sure. that. But with what I found out today, the the conversation that this gentleman had with someone else that they, in turn, told me about, kind of irritated me. I just a tad, because sure. I thought, okay, if what he's saying is that nobody's going to do anything, what's the sense in having a complaint form to fill out? Sure. And with him saying that he has no authority to do anything, there's a big, br it's not a tree that we're talking about anymore. Mm -hmm. It's been laying in that backyard for four, five, six months. The brush pile in the car, we do have authority. And Thank you. That, we will take care of that. And just so everyone knows, how that happens is we have to give allowable time by not only ARCA but also state law to give that person ample time to correct the problem themselves. If they don't correct the problem themselves, then we can initiate what we call the abatement process where the city comes in. We do the work for you and then we send you a bill. And it's usually not cheap. Um, but I think the confusion to, to I'll have to go back, right. long, but I think, yeah, Jim could not go in and do anything about the tree. Right. Well, I think the last time, because I had a, another complaint mm -hmm. where there were 
they'd toss mattresses in their backyard and they laid there for four months mm -hmm. and were attracting mice and ants and stuff like that. I did register a complaint with the city after I'd given them plenty of time to dispose of the mattresses and within three weeks it was taken care of. All that happened was someone from the city contacted the owner of the property, it's a rental property, oh. they contacted the owner of the property and within three weeks those mattresses were gone. Okay. And so I just kind of assumed when I filed this second complaint that the same process would happen and it didn't. And then after he, you know, it's like, okay, dude, you've already taken pictures of this big brush pile back there. You know it's not a tree standing. Mm -hmm. And I specified that it was a brush pile in my complaint. And I think I even stated that the tree had been taken down weeks earlier. And with him saying that there's nothing that, essentially he said he just more or less documents complaints or code violations and turns it over to somebody else That's, within the city. I'm not, yeah, I, I've never heard. Jim, Jim taught me how to do code enforcement. Jim knows what he's supposed to do. So I would just, I don't know. I, like I said, I, I would have to research it more, but that doesn't sound like something Jim would tell someone else. Because Jim really comes to me for what to say a lot of times. Yeah. So I think again. Well, it kind of surprised me that he yeah. would actually say something like that I, it was like, okay, dude, that's not really a smart thing to do. Did, did Jim tell you that directly? No. Okay. He, told, he told someone else and they Referred it forwarded, because the, yeah. they knew I was the complainant. Sure. So. Yeah. Um, Ms. Stump, do you mind if I give you a call tomorrow? To oh, call sure. I'm actually, I'm at home and you won't, you won't find me at work. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. you can give me a call at home. Thank you so much for coming. And, and not a problem. Really appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Any other comments from members of the public? Hearing none, uh, committee reports there are none tonight. Oh, oh. yes ma'am, go ahead. No, go ahead. She's mad. Just stand here there, we kind of have a little block back here. Um, Ronnie Manor, 317 North Adam Street. Um, I have a question about the EMS ordinance tonight. Um, so we're going to contract with a new company instead of ESO Solutions that's going to be emergency reporting, right? Great. That's um, a good answer. Just make sure I'm the one answer that. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, ma'am. So um, I'm sure you're looking forward to computerized services. It's a lot of benefits there. Um, just wondering with the kind of information that will be digitized, personnel records, payroll functions, medical billing, all of that, um, what kind of data security will we have with this new company? All, all um, I've had to use our EMS services before. It's very well cared for. Thank you very much. Um, but with anything that goes online, in the cloud, digitized, right. especially with the kind of information we're going to have here, um, how do we know they're going to protect that information? To get into legal, or it's it, all their all of their information is backed up in their servers. Um, it's very similar to the way that it, it is now through through ESO solutions. Um, I'd have to get some further information to like really to explain it a little bit better um, to probably answer your question a little bit better. Um, but it is all it's all secured through their servers. I believe it's probably actually. Um, spelled out into mm -hmm. in some of the data I have from them already um, that I might be able to sort through tonight. But um. is, is this something that's normally discussed when we engage like with a new vendor? Um, how they're going to protect our information, keep it private? You know, maybe, yeah. maybe this was discussed previously and I just missed it, but I was kind of surprised that we didn't have any discussion about going into business. Sit down and and the kind of questions I've raised on that. They have data encryption. When you do a health health records, any they have minimum data encryption standards that they have to adhere to, and that's probably issued by the state of Ohio. So if you do business in the state of Ohio, you have these minimum standards. That has definitely most surely been um, at least probably not talked about in open at a council meeting, but it's definitely taken into consideration in the back end. Um, but they could not do business in the state of Ohio. Period. With, with that kind of uh, health information, without encrypting their data. Yeah. So this new company it has a, is a certified state of Ohio provider. 
Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they're certified per se. I don't think there's a certification process to go to, uh, but they are able to do business in the state of Ohio. Yes. And basically, how that happens is, um, if you look at if you look at that, you have a whole separate set of, of legal stuff uh, uh, attached to that. Our attorney actually had a good time with that, and so she added a lot to it. So all that stuff is taken into account. It's not something we've discussed really at the forefront because we deal with medical records, um, but data encryption is definitely, definitely there. Absolutely. Very, very good question, by the way. Hats off to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Anyone else? Alrighty, moving on. Uh, committee reports, there are none tonight. Um, in other business, would anyone like to excuse Councilman uh, Lindsay? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Um, actually, I was just curious why he's out again. I didn't know. Knee surgery. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. To excuse Mr. Lindsay? Huh? Are you to vote to excuse Mr. Lindsay? Yeah. Mr. Cook? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Lake? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. All right. And Mrs. Burner. Congressman Warren Davidson will hold up both office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 Council, anything else? Mr. Right. Two things. One, Dewey, you know you're the only one in the entire city that can get away with, you're the only one in the city that can get away with talking during a council meeting. <laughs> you're, granddaughter. Oh yeah. Absolutely. You're the man, buddy. What can I say? <laughs> Family first, right? Um, two, just to uh, kind of piggyback off uh, Mr. Kraybacher's uh, comments earlier about employment this summer, and I have to make it sound a little bit better on our deal. The pool's hiring, so if you want to like, get a tan and, and get a paycheck at the same time, uh, the pool's going to need lifeguards. So if you're interested, stop by the uh, city building and pick up an application if anyone is interested. And that's all I had. Right. Council? Mr. Cobb? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Basically, I brought up last meeting in regards to a work session to go over the uh, book that we had gotten from Huber Heights in regards to uh, committees. I would like to have a work session next Monday evening, if I would so please everybody. Does the 23rd work for everyone? It's fine with me. So is that your official motion? That's my official what motion. What time? <laughs> Oh, good idea. If not, we can have that fire station. All right. Are you okay with that? Yep. Or your house. Yeah. Yeah, my house is fine. Is he going to mention his birthday? Is he going to mention his birthday? Okay. I'm assuming right now. Well, you can always ask him. Alec, you got the shelter house on yours? Yeah. Glitch. Hold on, you gotta wait. Glitch, I mean, user error. 23rd. In front of the door. So you're looking at the 23rd? Right. Um, I have it being open. All right. If that changes, I'll definitely shoot the email first thing in the morning. All right. Is there a second? Second. second. More thanks. Second is you? Yeah. First was Mr. Cook, second was you wanna what time you wanna do then? Six thirty, seven? Seven. Seven. Seven's fine. Seven. Seven. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. All right. Randy, would you like to Oh, go ahead. Yeah, well, this is you're the one that bought it, so. Oh, I just did for everyone because I'm you got super fan. Oh, Mr. Mr. Kyle, Kyle. You... Mr. Mayor, at this time, I'd like to offer Mr. Lowry and, and his wife, Mrs. Lowry, our condolence 
for the loss of her dad. Thank you. Uh, I hope I speak for everybody here from the city and council. If there's anything you need, please let us know. And we are sorry for your loss. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Well, if you're the one that bought it, so go ahead, Mr. Bridge. Okay. Well, Stewie. That's how I'm doing it. Happy 97th birthday, buddy. I got your cupcake. So there's 23. There was 24. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you are a fantastic person to talk to. I learn a lot from you every single time I talk to you. I don't think there's not a, a smile you don't light up when you walk into the room. I know. I saw you showed me a picture at stagecoach. Continue on being the fantastic person that you are and blessing us with your involvement here in the city because it would not be the same without you doing it. I get in trouble every time I turn around. Well, <laughs> you are allowed to at this point in time in your life, buddy. So, so yeah. help yourself. You got the first tips over there. Um, uh, anyone can take them. I'm not going to need more. Go to one. So please do it. But thank you for being a fantastic person from top to bottom. I think everyone appreciates you. And thank you for your service. Thank you all. Thank you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yes. But we, we, I, we have love for you. I hope I'm Ecuador. Hey, I have our goal. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Make sure to get a cupcake, Dewey. Oh, Make sure you get the cupcake, Chris. I forgot. I don't even know how to cut it off. It's all right. It's all right. I don't know how to work my work calendar email, so yeah, so it's, it's, it's fair game. Motion to adjourn. Uh, one second, real fast, before we do that. Um, for. Anyone who needs volunteer hours, this is coming Saturday at uh, 11 a.m. We're going to do a uh, Earth Day cleanup here at Let's Smith do it. Park do in the bike trail. Do it. Do it. Do it. Take those cupcakes with you. Make sure he gets the cupcakes. Take the cupcakes. I'll leave some right after that. Do it. Yeah. Hey, all right. Fair enough. <laughs> you don't want to take them home? 20. So, someone walk one out. Oh, uh, well. Well, uh, hey. You don't know what that is? Thank <laughs> <laughs>